Oh, looks like I'm recording. Now oh, this is my review of Interstellar by Christopher Nolan, starring Matthew McConaughey. Interstellar is amazing, and I saw it in the proper 35 millimeter format. There are very, very strong homages to 2001: A Space Odyssey, though this one was nowhere near as boring or pretentious. And it it's an amazing movie. It's it's emotional. It really looks at what it means to travel beyond the stars. It's not the make it so and so and suddenly you hear a whoosh and you're where you're going. It's there's a price to pay. You know, gravity will make you its bitch. And there some of the things Want to be nitpicky? Yeah, I'm sure you could tear it apart here and there, you know. But you know, they some of the things they glossed over, like how they figured out how to put people in hibernation. I don't know, maybe they, we're getting close to it now. We can do it temporarily, not for two years on years on end, you know. There's or this movie does have a villain and. You kind of, I won't ruin for you, but there will be a villain in this movie. A surprising one. But they kind of foreshadow it. But after that, you know, it's just, it's an amazing movie. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's, it's an amazing movie. It's hard to say anything else. It's. The only thing I can talk about is the extra experience of watching a 35mm, which was unique. Now, I think, I doubt if you, I have forgotten the whirring of the projector. And at first it was distracted because I've, I've been in and work in a theater that uses digital. So it's absolute silence and the image is crystal clear. This one, if you look close enough, you can see a little grain, you can see... A hair there or there, if you look closely. It's not absolutely pristine and clean. But the movie's so good, you don't notice it. Which a lot of bad... You'll notice... If this movie was terrible, you would notice the grain. But it actually gives it warmth. If, you know, you f you're you looking into something that's real. It's not ones and zeros. It's hard to quantify. There, Every time you watch this movie here or at another theater if they're not using the same even every after every use there's going to be something slightly different and i don't know if anyone's you know it's possible for someone to be conscious of it but as you watch it you kind of there's something unconscious about how you re, your eye reacts to 35 millimeter you know because this is how the let this isn't how you see the world this isn't how a digital camera sees the world this is how, like, a hundred-year-old alchemy sees the world. And feel free to leave comments down below tell me how I'm a jackass and I should shut up and blah, blah, blah. But I actually really enjoyed it because I think it's the subliminal parts of 35 millimeter. Like, in the background, I could hear the projector whirring. And it's like a heartbeat. A really fast heartbeat, but a heartbeat. And I noticed it at the beginning, but once the movie got going and it got it started getting to a climax, you don't notice it. You're all into the movie. And that's something you don't get with projection. Projection it's too clean. And you hear the sound and you the most annoying thing I've had with pro is that how people don't respect film, but this movie was respected. Christopher Nolan loves film. And it shows it on every frame. It's beautiful. And it's ugly at the same time. You know, it has the beauty of something well shot. And the ugliness of reality. Because nothing's pristine. I'm not pristine. You're not pristine. Film shouldn't be pristine. It should have a little nick. A little personality. So, yeah. 
That was Interstellar. My favorite movie of the year. And I've had some really good movies this year. But this is by far my favorite movie. This is the movie, as soon as I got out of the theater, I wanted to go back and see it again. Hell, I'm going to try to go back and see it again with some friends. I'm going to shut up. <laughs>